Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Uh, welcome to a, what I have to assume, is a fairly small number of people because this is like a quick view follow-up. These don't happen very often unless we made a statement or something in that quick view. Like when we when we did the quick view on these, the Rhino Crawler SO95. Rhino Crawler now has the SO95 V2. Uh, we just built a UA1 in a recent live stream. It came with the SO95 V2s, and the SO95 V2s are perfectly functional. You put like 40 or 50 weight oil in them, and you're good to go. They're a little tough to fill, but they work. The SO95, when they were quick viewed, I would say basically does not work at all. Inside of this, usually we can, sometimes if you're lucky, you can get the whole cartridge to come out like that. So when we remove the whole cartridge, we have an unnecessarily over-convoluted system where we have two, yes, count them, two pistons, and those pistons are secured in place with an E-clip. And if you'll notice, the E-clip covers several holes on the piston. This makes the piston not want to move. And then when it does move, on the cap is on threading on the cap is this o-ring which sets down into the body that that little o-ring right there that o-ring is not the right size to fill the land and and bridge the gap between the cap and the body so even if you do somehow get the pistons to move through the oil it will just blow by at the top cap in copious quantities the oil will also, and I don't know if this is by design or by incident, but if you have them filled correctly, they will blow oil by at the bottom too. They're basically trying to hydrolock themselves. So when building the V2s and having the V2s apart, I said, well, let's take a look at what these look like on the inside and see if we can't use parts on hand to make them work. We don't have to worry about the overall final integrity of this. We just need to get these E-clips off because, sadly, well, okay, this is bittersweet. Also, I, w I really want to show you how over-engineered uh, and convoluted the shock shaft is on this. Ah, there we go. So there is the top clip, and then the pistons are threaded on to the shock shaft. This is obviously, obviously, uh, to make it so that the holes in the two pistons line up because they are four hole pistons, very small holes, but none of that matters because the O, the, the E-clip, if the bottom E-clip doesn't do it, I mean, if the top E-clip doesn't do it, then the bottom E-clip will because you saw the size of the, oh, so piston stuck in there. The bottom E-clip is bigger because the shock shaft changes size a couple times. There's really no need for this much machining. We have to take the whole top apart because the only way to get this through, it cannot be pushed through this way, it won't work. Uh, if you try to pull the, the shaft through that way, uh, it's you're in for a bad time because it's like 3.5 millimeter thread at that end. Like, look how big it is. And then it tapers, and then it tapers, and then it tapers. It's unnecessarily... So all of that, the pistons, the end, you won't be able to reuse that rod end. So there's downsides, sure. And as I said, this is only for people who are unfortunate enough to have Rhino SO95s. So not the V2s. We'll call them the V1, even though they're not marked as such. If you have a set laying around, they can be salvaged. Whether or not that salvaging is worth it is up to you. If you've bought what we hear called Chavtex, knockoff Deluxe Dravtex, uh, the shaft from a Deluxe Dravtex is actually a little short. Traxxas 1664, uh, and then a Traxxas High Flow Piston for GTS... This is high flow piston for a TRX4 shock. 
Those go right together. And then this will go right through. It's a little shorter than the shaft that comes on the SO95s because as in the name 95, they are 95 millimeter shocks. This is a shaft from a 95 millimeter shock, but it basically turns it into a 90 millimeter. But what it also does is it turns it functional, which is, which is something that I think is pretty handy. Thread the whole cartridge in. Uh, if, even if these are directly out of the package from Rhino, there's going to be mineral oil or whatever everywhere. If you were unfortunate enough to try to pre-fill them in the past, I mean, they use a wiper in here and it is, it is buttery smooth. Now also see the piston stops about where it should. So. 300 CST, this is what we, we put air quotes around. There's a little ghost writing on there. We put air quotes around that, and we call it air quotes 300 CST, because what this bottle is, is all the shock oil that comes with shocks. When you buy Traxxas shocks, when you get axial shocks, when you get element shocks, any shocks that come with oil, they come in those like little squidgy bottles. Uh, I just pour them all into one container. These shocks have no bleeding method to them, which if you own them, you might have found that out already. So what you're going to do is the threads, because they're internal cap, you're going to fill to just below the level of the threads. And because the bottom will blow by like it does, it's effectively impossible to overfill them. They, they, will, they will blow any extra oil by, which is not great. But we press on. So you saw I pointed out this is the o-ring that comes in the shocks we are going to replace those all four of them so you're going to need four shock shafts you're going to need four traxxas pistons for the gts and i'm pretty sure i'm pretty darn rootin' tootin sure they need to be the high flow pistons they can't just be the regular pistons because we're putting 300 cst in there which is about 27 and a half weight and I would love to use 40 and up on shocks because the lighter the oil weight, the quicker it's going to leak out. And these shocks kind of have built-in blow-by. So we're going to replace that little tiny skinny one with a silicone O-ring that I, I can't help you. They are... This is the most help that I can offer you. They are about 5 millimeter OD three millimeter ID, maybe a little bit under three millimeter ID. And they have a cross section of one and a half millimeters. Uh, I don't know what they're from. They are from my, my parts collection. Uh, they don't need to be silicone, but the silicone do work. All I'm saying is dig in your bins and find an O-ring that will fit on to the cap and see how much fatter that is than the profile of the Look, look at this thing. Is there any question that doesn't fill the land when we've got that? It's double the cross section. This is a sub one millimeter cross section on there. It is my belief that it is the same O-ring that lives down here on the base. And that one does seal. But when it's put on the cap, it does not. So we have our shock filled to just below the top level. And you'll know if you got it because that size O-ring just perfectly zip, tightens right in, feels nice, we push up, and yeah, we got a little pushback, and we actually got that filled pretty much perfect, because it's not blowing by at the bottom, we have no squidge out at the top, and if you've tried to fill SO95s in the past, they will just blow out around the cap horribly, Then you get into the springs, they come with a bunch of springs. If you had purchased an old UA1, like a version 1 UA1, uh, I know that is potentially as confusing as humanly possible. If you have a UA1 V2, I guess they could have just called it the UA2, but uh, nevertheless, here we are. As I mentioned, those rod ends are 3.5 millimeter. They won't work. Luckily, the Element rod ends from Element Shocks are pretty much the exact same diameter and the exact same length as the ones that came on the rhinos. 